These videos are offered on a pay-what-you-like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos at my website. There's a link to my website in the info box. The address is www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos.htm or you can just use the link in the info box. Thank you. So did you guys do the, uh, the PI problem in the video? Yes. yes. That makes sense? Um, yes. Can we just, I just have a question. Although PK and PH are different, you still basically compare them. Compare them. That's right. Um, they are different, but you do compare them. So the point is, um, things are protonated at low pH, and things are deprotonated at high pH. But high and low are relative terms. How can you tell whether the pH is high or low? Relative to the pKa. Yeah, relative to the pKa. So even though like, you can have a pKa of 50, but you can only have a, the highest pH is 14? Well, theoretically, pH could, pH could also be 50. It just that rarely happens. It's not, true that, um, it's not true that pH can't go above 14. Uh, it's theoretically possible that pH could be 15 or 16 or 17. Also, pH can be less than zero. It could be negative 1 or negative 2 or negative 3. It's just that those don't happen very much. So that's why you say that like, if the pKa is 12, then you need the pH to be 13 to be protonated. That's true. <laughs> that's right. Okay. That's right. So whatever the pKa is, that tells you the threshold for what high and low pHs would be for that particular functional group. Okay. That's the reason why in a big peptide, at a certain pH, some of the functional groups will be protonated and some will be deprotonated. Because some of, for some of them, the solution will feel like a low pH, and for some of them, it will feel like a high pH, because they have different pKa's, different thresholds. So the main mistake that people make is they think that things are protonated when the pKa is lower than the pH. No, they're protonated when the pH is lower than the pKa. That should make sense, because things are protonated when the solution has lots of protons. Well, the solution is described by the pH. So in order to tell whether something is protonated, you should look at the pH. And to sell, see whether that's high or low, you should compare that to the pKa. Well, the main way to avoid making mistakes is just to do practice problems. That's something you're likely to see on the test. Okay. I mentioned on the, uh, in the videos, I think, that I tend to make lots of careless mistakes on those problems. You want to take your time and double check yourself when you're doing those. Okay. And the only reason we check on the chart to see if the R group is acidic or basic is to see what the two different that's right. forms are. It has nothing to do with the pH and pKa. I, no, not, not in any important way. Okay. That's right. So, because for some of the R's that were acidic, they had a pKa of like twelve point five. Right. And so, at a really basic pH of like twelve, it still wouldn't um, deprotonate, even though they're acids. So it doesn't matter. So let's suppose that we're at a low pH. If we're at a low pH, and let's just focus on the side chains here, would this side chain be protonated or not protonated? Uh, it's pKa is really high. Well, good, uh, since we're at a very low pH, low we pH would be protonated. protonated. So, and so is this the correct form? Yes. No. Yes. yes. For that substituent, yes, but for the whole molecule, no. Yeah, oh yeah, so let's not worry about the side chains here. Now, let's not worry about the main chain, let's just worry about the side chain. Is this the correct form of the side chain? Yes. Yeah. How about at a low pH, is this the correct form of the side chain? No. And the correct form would be this, right? So the two forms for lysine are NH2 and NH3. But what are the two forms here? Oh, minus So the table that says whether it's acidic or basic only helps us with the two forms. That's right. Okay. So is this an acidic or basic? Acidic. That's right, because if you looked in the table, there would be no little c next to the number. There's no little c. This is acidic. Since it's acidic, that means that, there, um, that what it wants to do is lose a proton to look like this. It's not going to gain a proton. This is a common mistake. A lot of people think that the protonated form would look like this. But this is not basic, so it doesn't have this as one of its standard forms. So because this is acidic, because there's no little c, these are the two forms we have to 
to compare. But if you look at lysine, you'll see there is a little c next to its number. So this is basic, which means that these are the two forms for lysine, either neutral or positive. So the, the key thing is an acidic side chain has both a neutral and a negative form. And a basic side chain has both a neutral and a positive form. And that's very important if you're trying to figure out the net charge on the molecule. Acidic means it's either neutral or negative, and basic means it's either neutral or positive. Okay, so that's the, that's the main point of looking for those little c's there. Okay. It should have been obvious to us that this was basic anyway, because it's an amine, and we know that amines are basic. But this one is not that obvious, whether it's going to be acidic or basic, because uh, it seems like it does have a lone pair. Well, there's um, quite a bit of practice on finding PIs and charges in those two sets of videos. So you can practice that in there. That's an important thing to practice. Uh, I don't have too much time, but maybe we can try to go into the synthesis of amino acids and peptides. So starting with our Gabrielle synthesis. So this is the basic form of an amino acid. This is the basic form of the amino acid. I mentioned in the videos how important I think it is to keep labeling the main chain alpha carbon. Remember the basic structure is nitrogen, alpha carbon, carboxy carbon. And here's our side chain. So we need to know how to synthesize these. Well, part of this is an amine. So one thing they suggested is that we can use a Gabrielle synthesis. Gabrielle synthesis works? Yes. So remember that we have to use succinamide. Oh, not succinamide, thalamide. So we're using thalamide. Now remember that this is simply, we thought of this as just a nitrogen delivery vehicle. Eventually, we're going to break both of these bonds. This is just a way of delivering nitrogens without overalkylating. Uh, so the first thing we have to do is make this into a better nucleophile by adding a base. If we add a base... Do we have to show that, or can we just... Yeah. Depends on where they, where they tell you to start. Uh, so in a sense, this is probably tell you what you're starting with. So they might say start with this, and then you don't need to show the base. But if you were starting with thalamide, you'd have to show the base that turns this into a better nucleophile. Uh, in the lecture notes, they just started here with the base. And then they added a 1,3 dicarbonyl. Now, let's talk about what our plan is over here. We want this nitrogen to become this nitrogen here. Therefore, we want this carbon to become this carbon over here. Maybe I can put in some numbers here. So maybe we want these two carbons to be these two carbons over here. So we can easily show the mechanism for this next step. Well, what's going to happen in our next step? What will be the name for this next mechanism between these two things? SN2. Just a normal SN2. Got a good nucleophile, a good leaving group, you can attack something secondary. trying to draw this to look as much like our intended product as possible. So we've now got the nitrogen attached to who's going to be our alpha carbon and who's going to be our carboxy carbon over here. All 
All right, uh, and now we're kind of done. So now we need to detach this. What do we add to detach this? What type of reaction do we need to do now? To hydrolysis. Hydrolysis. So let's do a acidic hydrolysis. And let's actually do this. Let's write what the product is going to be from that acidic hydrolysis. <laughs> 